We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Hey man, stop that cat. Errol Spence Jr. thrashes Terrence Bud Crawford's resume, saying you became undisputed at 140, but you did it beating Julius Ndongo. Who was in Dongo? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxer. Best in the business. Now, the press conference is over. Both fighters go back to their respective training camps so they can get it cracking. It's gonna be a great fight. I think both guys got skills, welterweight needs a fight like this. They're, everything has led to this moment. Now, Errol Spence took some shots, many a shot at Terrence Crawford's resume and he wasn't feeling it. He says, Julius Ndongo, I feel like that guy was not that good. Regis Progre stopped him in the first round too. Who that guy beat to become a world champion? So in the New York presser, while Errol Spence is saying these things, and it is true that Regis Progre stopped Julius Ndongo as well, Crawford jumped in and said he beat Troyanovsky, Edward Troyanovsky, via vicious first round stoppage. Errol Spence responds to that and says, Troy who? Come on, man. End quote. Now, I got to agree with Errol Spence Jr. Now, for starters, I went to Terrence Crawford versus Julius Ndongo. I wanted to support. I've always been a fan of Terrence Crawford's work in the ring, but I went to that fight. I was there ringside, so I got to see him set history. And to Terrence Crawford's credit, he was the first guy in this kind of newer generation to become undisputed before Canelo, before Nayao Inoue and Usyk and Jermel Charlo and Devin Haney, all these guys that have become undisputed more recently. Terrence Crawford was the first one to break that dry spell. So I give him credit for it in general. But the reality is at the time that Terrence Crawford fought at 135 and at 140 pounds, they weren't quote unquote stacked divisions what do I mean what I mean is if you look at when Terrence Crawford was at 35 and 40 it was much like when Adrian Broner was at 135 Broner moved up beat the top guy at that time Antonio DeMarco sliced him up so he had fought Gavin Reese previous to that and there was really not that many names at that given moment and that's how the game works. At that given moment, there weren't really top names. So Adrian Broner did what a true champion is supposed to do and looked up. Now, he didn't have to look quite so far up to go to welterweight. He could have just moved to 140. But again, there were the bigger names at 147 and Broner don't duck no fades. So Adrian Broner took the smoke with Pauli Malignaggi, became a champion, and then he fought Marcos Maidana, which was completely contrast in terms of the style of a Pauli Malignaggi light puncher to a, a vicious, rugged guy like Maidana. So you got to give props to Broner for being a dog. Now, everything I say on my channel is rooted in history and truth, just like Errol Spence's nickname, The Truth. I'm giving you the truth. This is my true, honest opinion. Now, I'm not blaming Terrence Crawford for who was present when he was at those division. His body can make those weights, that's his weight class. He he fought the people he could. I get it. The best being Victor Postal out of that bunch and then maybe Gamboa or something. That's not even my issue because you can't really control who's in your division at a given time. But far be it from me, just like Errol Spence, to not put it in perspective and keep it real. When Crawford was at those division, the best he could do was Thomas DeLorme and Ray Beltran, guys like that outside of the two ones, Postal and Gamboa. Like though there, he didn't really have this crazy body of work because it wasn't a stacked division. So in essence, 
on top of giving his body a break, he kind of needed to move up in weight to pursue bigger opportunities and names because Keith Thurman's and Danny Garcia's and Arrow's and guys like that were at 47. And 47, 147, welterweight has always historically been a glamour division. So I understand what Errol Spence is saying. And the fact of the matter is, I agree with him. Julius Ndongo is, is not the best name. Uh, he's not like a Hall of Fame type of name. Now, you didn't really know much about Ndongo before the fight outside of Troy Anofsky, but just like Errol Spence is saying, Troy Anofsky must he might have been a ranked person at lightweight at the time, but you've never heard on my channel me raving about Troy Anofsky or Ricky Burns, a guy that Terrence Crawford and Ndongo also beat. These are like ranked people and or old media favorites at the time, but I tell you who's popping in the sport of boxing and the people I've said have been guys like Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Javante Davis, and a slew of other fighters, David Morrell Jr. And they are all continuing to do well for themselves much after I noted them and told you guys to watch for these people. You get what I'm saying? So Ndongo is, is a type of win that really didn't age well for Terrence Crawford because he lost his very next fight against Regis Prograde. He has 24 wins, 13 knockouts, and eight losses, six by knockout. You know what I'm saying? So since the Terrence Crawford fight, because Crawford beat him and he hadn't been knocked out or beaten before, he's lost eight times, six of which by knockout. So you can't really, I can't hold Crawford per se accountable for what Ndongo did after him, but when a guy is not known for being a legend before him and you don't really know much about him before him, then you kind of have to look at the the totality of their career to see if like, OK, how good was this person? And, you know, I think his record is showing you that he's, he's just not that dude. And that's why Errol Spence is like, Troy, who? Troy Yanofsky and, and Dongo? Like, that guy is just not that good. Like, just look at some of the names he lost to. He lost three in a row recently, Mizkel Nematov and, you know, Kermatron and like, what, what is, like, who are these people? Like Tank Davis, he can fight Eastside Pitbull Cruz. Cruz gave him a pretty tough fight and his very next fight, he destroys Gamboa, right? And he's going to show you on the Errol Spence Crawford card, you know, how he's looking in that particular fight. But that, as Pitbull Cruz continues to do well for himself, that's going to only help Tank Davis and make Tank legend grow. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, I'll leave you with this final thought, right? My final thought is this. When you look at Terrence Crawford's body of work in the lighter divisions, because that's what he's mostly praised for. He's not really praised for his welterweight run because we know he didn't fight the bigger names because they were all with PBC and he stubbornly stayed with top rank and re-signed with them. So people that i've seen that are crediting him a lot of the credit goes to he moved up in weight he was undisputed and then you got to look at that you got to look at that with the fine tooth comb and look at it so i'm gonna leave you with this final thought and you guys let me know in the comment section when you look at terrence crawford's resume at 135 and 140 or even after that we could just say his whole career name three fighters that after crawford fought him they did well for themselves and you know reached the top of a division or close to or anything like that because when i look at crawford's resume unfortunately most of the names they age like milk as opposed to again a couple fine wines like when mayweather beat canelo canelo went on to become a face in boxing and a force to be reckoned with and only lose to bevo so that way that that canelo win ages very well for 36, 37 year old Floyd Mayweather. Look at Terrence Crawford's body of work. Thomas Delorme, what did he do after the Crawford fight? Not much, not much. You know, close fight with Hank Lundy, I think it was. He got knocked out in one round by Jerron Boots Ennis, who's considered a prospect. You look at Ndongo, I just showed you, Ndongo had eight losses, you know, so seven of them came after Crawford and five knockouts since Crawford. Um, Victor Postal, he lost to Ramirez. He lost to Gary Antoine Russell, who's like 21, 22 years old. Gamboa, I mean, he lost to everybody. He quit on a Golden Boy card on the stool. 
He got knocked out by Tank. He got beat up by Devin Haney. Pitbull Cruz ran through him. Like, I'm just wondering. I'm just curious what you guys think. And, you know, people, you guys can say, oh, you're hating and all that. But if you don't answer the question, I really don't care. Because you, we're going to get to the bottom of this. The bottom line is, if Crawford's able to beat Errol Spence, that will be the first certified win. There, There's nothing, there's no other side to it. It's just like, you beat a great fighter in Errol Spence. And I think that's why I'm most hyped for this fight. Because it's really Crawford's crowning moment. If he can get this done and defeat Errol Spence, that will be his crowning moment. There's literally no one even remotely close to the momentum and the stature of Errol Spence that Crawford's fought in multiple divisions. People keep talking about he moved up multiple classes. True. But he moved up against who? And like I stated, name somebody that Crawford fought that went on to do legendary things or even just do well for themselves. Because there's plenty of people where, like, let's say Marcus Brown beats Badu Jack. Okay, he beat Badu Jack. But then Badu Jack went on to become a champion at cruiserweight so that's a good win and it ages well but when i look at crawford's bill of health or his resume his track record i don't really see a lot of these wins aging well like ricky burns what did he go on to do nothing you know you look at victor postal he lost most of his big fights i told you gary antoine russell and ramirez and so forth jose benavidez at welterweight he went on to lose to Danny Garcia, like his very next fight, I think it was. I'm just looking for the signature win because Terrence Crawford was on with Kate Abdo. And in that interview with Kate Abdo, he said he got a ton of signature wins. But then when you look at it, who were the signature wins? You look at, let's say Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn lost to Crawford. He beat Anthony Mundane, who I never really even rated. And in his very next fight, he lost to a guy that Kell Brook beat in Michael Zarafa. And a guy that Paul or Peter Quillen, Kid Chocolate, knocked out years ago. And he got knocked out by Michael Zarafa. Then he went and won the rematch. And then he loses by knockout to Tim Zhu. So as it sits, Jeff Horn, he has three losses. And they all came by knockout. Crawford was, again, the first person to do it. But his career really went nowhere. And I don't even think he beat Pacquiao. So it's like, you really, we unpacked. When you really look at Crawford's whole resume, look at Sean Porter. Sean Porter had done amazing things, but the very next fight, he retired. So he and he said he knew he was going to retire. And that go you go down one by one, mean machine. He ended up losing to Virgil Ortiz by knockout. Like I'm I'm just curious who 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 has thrived after fighting Crawford. So again, I stand on that. I think Errol Spence will be his first signature win where there's absolutely nothing you can say. Like, for example, Teofimo Lopez is 24, 25 years old. Teofimo has credible wins at that age that you can't say nothing bad. Like, Teofimo beat Lomachenko. I'm just going to give you guys examples because it's easy off the top of the dome to do that instead of just, I don't want to overexplain. Teofimo years ago beat Lomachenko years ago, and he won fair and square. Teofimo fights Lomachenko. Lomachenko bounces back. He knocks out Nakatani. And then he ends up almost knocking out Richard Comey. And then he just gave Devin Haney, a top talent and a younger guy, a run for his money to the point where people say that Lomachenko may have won the fight or the fight was a draw. So that win ages well for Teofimo Lopez because Lomachenko has continued to, you know, just look somewhat or or impressive somewhat impressive or impressive against named people ranked people you look at josh taylor that's another one josh taylor was undefeated and a former undisputed and he really was undisputed he just had to relinquish his title based on politics and then teofimo dominated him that's at age 24 25 so that's a certified this is what i'm talking about that's a certified win that's a certified win you look at errol spence resume errol spence he ends up beating, like, let's say Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia moved up in weight, and then he beat Jose Benavidez. He hasn't had much activity, but he's about to fight Edislandi Lada. If he could beat Lada, then, again, that's going to help Errol Spence's legend grow because Danny Garcia is doing well for himself. It's kind of how it works. Like, Pacquiao beats Keith Thurman, and then Keith Thurman 
continues to win and ain't lost to nobody else since Pacquiao. So that helps Pacquiao's legacy because he beat Keith Thurman, dropped him in the first round, and Keith Thurman has been on a streak and hasn't lost since that. So you guys break down Terrence Crawford's resume. Is it impressive? And if you think it is impressive, again, answer the question and just name who you feel has done well, like who was doing great before he fought him, had a lot of momentum, and then did well after he, Terrence Crawford beat him. You see what I'm saying? We unpack. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working.